Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to another video of Needing with Branco and welcome back to my sourdough masterclass. Today we are day four and today we are going to properly feed our sourdough for the first time. Yesterday we also did a feeding but it wasn't a proper one just for the simple reason that uh, we did not add any water. Uh, but the reason for that is because yesterday we just took 100 grams of our compound, which was basically a polish. It has the consistency of a cream. And all we did was just adding 50 grams of a strong flour. In my case, I used the Manitoba Oro from Kapufu, uh, which is a strong flour. It has a, a W, which is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 380, 390. So if you can't find a strong flour like this one here, just uh, uh, if you don't find the same flour, just try and find a strong flour which has a W uh, greater than 360, 380. So the reason why yesterday uh, we just added 50 grams of flour, it was because we wanted to make, to make our compound a little bit more uh, tough, a little bit more stiff, a little bit more solid. And that's why we did that. You're going to see that the more you feed it, the more solid it will become. Now, uh, you can see some signs of fermentation today. You can see some bubbles inside, but obviously th this today did not double up in volume and we were expecting this. It's absolutely okay. But uh, as I said yesterday in the video of yesterday, uh, from now on, we're not going to care anymore about the doubling in size, about the volume of our starter. We are just going to keep on feeding it every single day, every 24 hours, in exactly the same way, using a strong flour, mixing 100 grams of compound, 50 or 45 grams of water. In this case, I'm going to use a lukewarm water. And we're going to keep on feeding it for every 24 hours for day four, which is today, day five and day six. So for the next three days, the procedure is always going to be the same. So let's proceed with the feeding. Let's uh, uh, place uh, just a clean container, clean always with just one water and nothing else. No soap or anything like that. Let's put it on top of the scale and let's reset it. Let's open up our sourdough starter. And the very first thing that we are going to do, we are going to remove the crust. Yes, because as you can see here, it created some sort of crust on top, which is actually quite thick. This is all a sign of the fermentation. Look at this. This is all positive sign. You see that it has an internal structure which is uh, similar to a sponge. Uh, this is all good because this, is, this means that the good bacteria are actually acting on our sourdough and the fermentation is happening correctly. Um, so let's use another container here to put our leftovers here and uh, let's use a teaspoon to transfer 100 grams of our compound here which we cannot call it sourdough yet inside the container where we're going to mix it in the meantime i was talking and uh, the scale went off that's fine let's turn it on again and let's move 100 grams of compound in here this is 50 do not worry if you don't manage to reach 100 grams precisely because we can adapt the quantities anyway but what we can also do if i don't manage to reach 100 grams in here 85 is i can take a little bit from the bottom of the crust because this part is good and we can use it to mix it so let's see with this another with this other piece if i manage to reach 100 grams 90 and ninety-nine. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. So we reach a hundred grams. I eventually managed to reach a hundred, so it's all good as you can see it's a hundred grams of compound there. In this phase, let's start smelling 
our sourdough, our compound, which actually we cannot call yet sourdough. Although it might have an unpleasant smell, by smelling it, you can actually figure out how it changes every single day and how it reacts to the fermentation itself. Because mine, for example, smells like acetic acid, uh, a mix of wine and also a bit of fruit. It's completely normal, it's absolutely fine at this phase. And let me actually remind you that in this phase, you cannot and you should not use your discard. So you can see here that I have a little bit of discard, which is basically the crust that we removed from the top, which was oxidized. Then I removed it and you should throw it away. I know that in the recipes that uh, are using sourdough, if you are, uh, for example, feeding a little bit more of sourdough and then the quantity that you need for that recipe is a little bit less than what you um, uh, fed. Uh, so basically you can use the rest as a discard and you can use the discard for other recipe. Please do not do that at this stage. The sourdough that we are making right now is not stable yet. Uh, it's too acid and it cannot be used and it cannot be even tasted for any reason whatsoever. It's going to be very sour if you do. It's uh, uh, an unstable compound and it should not be used. I do not recommend it at all. In order for it to be ready, we need at least a month. Anyway, as I said, I managed to reach 100 grams, but if you don't, do not worry because you can adjust the quantities if needed. Uh, 100 grams essentially is good for the proportion, so it does uh, it, it makes our life a little bit easier when it, when it goes for calculation. Now we're going to clean the container and let me stress this enough. Um, this container has to be cleaned only with warm water. Do not use any soap for, for any reason whatsoever. Uh, and I'm gonna dry it with the keech kitchen roll sheet of paper. I have watched many YouTube videos in my journey to create our sourdough and I've read so many books. And when I watched the YouTube videos, uh, I noticed that literally everyone was recommending, or the majority of people, um, was recommending to use different containers all the time when you are creating your sourdough. And to be honest, I don't understand why, because this not, does not make any sense. It's a waste of time. It's, uh, it's, it's just, it, it, if, we, if we want to be picky as well, it's better to use always the same container because it just helps the fermentation because it keeps the good bacteria where they are because the good bacteria are gonna stay in there in the same container. So you, you always want to use the same container. I don't understand why we should be using another one. Anyway, um, at this stage, at this feeding, we're going to add flour. As I said, I'm going to use a Manitoba, which is a strong flower. If you, if you can't find the same one, I'm going to use a Manitoba Oro. Uh, do not worry, just use a strong flower with the W value that has um, 360, 380. Let's weigh our flour. And we want to have the same quantity of flour as for our starter. So our starter was 100 grams. Let's use 100 grams of flour this stage as well. Almost there. Cool. 100, 101 is absolutely fine. And then we're going to use 45 grams of water. So we're going to use uh, um, a hydration of 45%. And the temperature of the water should be lukewarm, lukewarm enough. In this case, it should be around 24, 25 degrees. Let's wait for the thermometer to pick up the temperature correctly and I made sure it was around 
not to be contaminated with our fluids or anything like that. It just has to be clean, as clean as possible. And if you clean it, just clean it with uh, warm water and nothing else. Not even here, don't use soap. I just want you to notice something here. The more and more, the more feedings we're going to do, uh, the, the less rye flour you're going to notice, obviously, because we are releasing the rye flour bit by bit, every feeding that we're going to do for sourdough. Now, knead it as strong as possible because we want to make it smooth. So just use the movements as much as possible, just like that. We want to make it smooth. Do, do this movement if it, if it can help you. Just push the dough and roll it onto it, it, itself. And when once you roll it, just push it down with your wrist, just like that. With the left hand, I'm keeping it still. On the right hand, I'm rolling it on top of, of itself. And this makes it less sticky every time that I do this. Let's roll it a little bit. And if we have uh, a rolling pin in our hands, just like that. Let's roll it like this. And that's ready. Let's create a ball. And when the ball is created, that's it. Look at how beautiful this is. We take our clean container, the same container that we're gonna use for the entire life of our sourdough, and let's push it down exactly like we did yesterday because we want to level it, because we wanna keep track of the level of the fermentation. But it's not that big of an issue at this time if it doesn't rise that much, if it, especially if it doesn't double in volume, because as I said, we have to repeat exactly the same process for today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. So we want to repeat the same process for three days in a row. And now, exactly like we did yesterday, we're gonna cover this with clean film, not too tight because we're going to apply some holes so the air can flow within and the bacteria, the good bacteria can contaminate this compound to make it rise and to make it ferment. We're gonna leave like yesterday, at a warm temperature of 24 degrees Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. If you uh, can't find an environment which is warm enough to keep 24 degrees, one suggestion that I give you once again is to, is to move the container which contains your sourdough inside your uh, home oven just turned off with the light on, so just keep the light on. And uh, uh, in that way, the, the temperature will rise until 28 degrees Celsius or something like that. In order to keep it a little bit cooler, uh, just place between the door of the oven, place uh, a wooden spoon or something that can uh, prevent uh, the, the uh, uh, oven to be completely sealed. So quite film. Gently apply some holes. If you can't apply the holes with your fork, just take some toothpicks. I found these much, much better for this purpose. And be generous with the holes. You want to have a lot of holes here because you want the air to flow in as much as possible because this compound has to breathe. The bacteria uh, have to contaminate it. Good. So now we're going to apply our rubber band to track the level of the fermentation like exactly like we did yesterday. And as I said, we're going to repeat this process today, tomorrow and day six. So for three days in a row, it has to be exactly the same. 100 grams of our compound, which eventually will be our sourdough, 100 grams of strong flour, Manitoba, and uh, 45 grams of lukewarm water. Leave it to ferment for 24 hours at 24 degrees Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. Now, uh, today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, the process is gonna be exactly the same. So I'm not gonna record it because it, it's pointless. So I'm gonna see you on the day three for another precious advice. 
in the meantime feel free to reach me on instagram my, my account there is a uh, meeting with franco and feel free to subscribe to this channel and like the content and, and like this video if you like the content